Hey folks, welcome back to Bennett Science. This video is in a series of videos about the Cavendish experiment. This is my attempt to recreate that experiment. Actually, my third attempt to recreate that experiment. I've been building for a couple of weeks, so you haven't seen an update. Not quite to the testing phase, but I wanted to show you where I'm at. So this is the rig I'm working with. Uh, it's mostly just built out of two by fours and some plywood that I had around the house. Uh, Got a nice sturdy frame reinforced to the corners, so it should be pretty steady as, uh, as we're conducting the test. Now, the heart of the Cavendish experiment is that we have this, uh, this torsional pendulum hanging down. And so that's down here. Got the rod out to either side. And there's weights hanging down on both sides of that. Now, that's going to oscillate slightly back and forth. And we're going to figure out where that's oscillating around, um, what point that's oscillating around. And then we have these big heavy weights. So those will start out looking something like this. So they'll be perpendicular to the beam. Um, and after we figure out, after we let that swing back and forth, oscillate back and forth quite a bit, we're going to move these into position near to the two weights. And uh, so they're, they're going to be somewhere back, well, right where they started basically somewhere close by like this. And what we should see, what we expect to see then in the Cavendish experiment is that we still have that thing oscillating back and forth, but it should shift over toward the weights just very, very slightly. Now, we're talking about minuscule gravitational forces. We're trying to uh, control this to the point that um, I can get a value for G, the gravitational constant this time around. So there are a few things that I'm doing to make sure that there aren't um, so many outside influences is what we saw um, in the last two versions of this. Incidentally, this video is part of a playlist. You can see the original two versions and the previous videos leading up to this one in that playlist. Um, so first off, uh, I'm not going to be inside the cage. That's, that's a good way to, to isolate some variables. So there was this problem I was having with uh, uh, the earlier versions of this experiment that I needed to put these big heavy weights right next to the, the torsional balance in order to, uh, to cause that torque and make this whole thing swing over a little bit. But in doing so, I had to get myself very close to it. Um, so I was moving the air a little bit as, as I was doing that. And um, you know, it, it caused some disruptions, some noticeable disruptions. You wouldn't think that uh, just the movement of the air from one person walking by would be the big deal. But on the video, you can clearly see that uh, that balance start to swing more when I was close to it. So we've got uh, at the heart of our apparatus here, a little Lazy Susan device in the middle, and then this big two by four arm that it extends in both directions. We got some casters, some little wheels underneath to support all that weight. Uh, and then our big heavy concrete blocks on top of that and so this whole thing can shift over one direction or the other um, while I'm still outside of, uh, of our closed container. And so I don't have to get close to this and I don't have to uh, introduce my own air currents. Of course, just moving the apparatus itself is gonna cause air currents within that. Um, so we'll have to wait for the, the movements that that causes uh, to die down when we make those, those measurements. But that should be easy enough to do. It's just a matter of waiting long enough. The, the whole box is going to be uh, encased in clear plastic um, so that uh, any, any air currents in the garage here um, won't affect our results. Um, everything is set up so that I can manipulate this from outside of that closed container. So these strings that you see here, um, those are so that we can adjust the position of the weights one direction or the other without having to take off that plastic sheeting. Um, and so we won't see any, uh, uh, any effects from that, except I screwed up now and, uh, <laughs> and pulled the wrong direction and bumped the weight. That would be a mistrial, I'm afraid. Um, other things that, uh, that I'm doing on this, uh, I'm gonna plan the time of day carefully. Um, a lot of people mentioned that uh, air currents as a result of convection would be something that they would be concerned about here. So if there's big differences in temperature between the floor of the garage and the ceiling of the garage, or really the floor and the ceiling of the, uh, the apparatus, we'd expect to see some convection currents going on there. Um, so we're gonna try and do, find a time of day when uh, those temperatures are uh, pretty constant, uh, pretty consistent and um, uh, throughout time and pretty consistent throughout that vertical space. 
namely uh, in the middle of the night. So it's going to be a couple of late nights for me um, gathering data on this, but that'll be okay. Um, other than that, uh, the, the thing is, is pretty close to operational. I got to put the plastic on still. Um, the last big thing that we still have to do is find a way to measure the position of this hanging bar, which I knocked out of position and got it swinging here. Uh, measure the position of that, the angular position of that, and the angular position of the, um, the bar that holds the two heavy weights, um, the, the concrete blocks there. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is to use a laser and a mirror. I'll have a laser that's pointing uh, you know, at some angle in there. And it's going to be reflecting off of a mirror on each one of those bars. And so I actually have two lasers, one for each bar. Um, and then that reflected beam is going to strike basically a giant protractor. And we're going to use that to figure out the, the angular shift. Um, in that bar that we, uh, that we see. So the range of its oscillations, and then that center of its oscillations, and then the, um, any shift that we see in that, uh, in that center point. Um, I'll do a video later on this week or early next week about um, how exactly we're going to make those calculations, do a little bit of um, intro law of reflection stuff in case, uh, in case you're not familiar with that. Uh, before we put that into practice with this. But we are getting close. Looks like within probably a week or maybe a week and a half tops, uh, this thing should be ready to start making measurements. The trouble with the Cavendish experiment is it takes a long time to make measurements. So I'll update you when I'm to that point of um, starting the measurements and then uh, it'll be a little while again before the next video and we, uh, uh, we start seeing the results of those measurements. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, I hope that you uh, continue with the rest of the Cavendish videos and uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you get alerts when those later ones come up. Uh, there's also that little notifications bell. If you click that you get an email when the new videos come up. Uh, and like always, please share and like these videos if you liked them and if you want to share. Thanks very much everybody. Bye-bye.